This week on the Baseline Podcast, we're once again joined by Josh, and we talk about who we think will win the MVP. Is it Tom Brady? Is it Aaron Rodgers? We also discuss our mock draft point five. We don't really know what we're calling it, but you're going to hear all of our mock draft choices, who we think is going to go where, and what we think the big storylines will be. All that and much more on the Baseline Podcast. Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another episode of the Baseline Podcast, where we're going to try to cover all the angles. I'm back with uh, Josh. Josh is here. Um, you know, it's early in the afternoon, his time. It's, you know, at night, my time. It's freezing cold, probably in both places, I think. I don't really know. But uh, yeah, it's... it's this morning, Ben. Well, you know, it's not as cool as Minnesota is what I was told today. So um, yeah, welcome, Josh. Uh, I'm glad to have you back. This, is, this was fun last week. I appreciate all your guys' support. Um, it means a lot. It's, it was fun to talk about pretty much everything and anything sports last week. But this week, Josh... We're going to talk about the NFL. You know, it's playoff season, but it's also awards slash all pro teams. And you guys will get a little sneak peek in our kind of pre pre mock drafts, like our pre pre mock draft. I think that's what we're going to call it. Um, so, Josh, first off, how was your week? How did, how did, how did uh, the week of Josh Burris go to this week? Week's been good uh, as far as work goes. Uh, we had our conference basketball tournaments going on nice so made a lighter weekend so did get the chance to check out some nfl playoffs of course on saturday <laughs> um as far as the day goes just been kind of relaxing uh i haven't turned on any of the games today but i mean would you, would you want to watch the, would you want to watch the buccaneers win by 31 <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I really don't need to do that. I kind of figured that they would blast Philly similarly yeah. to, uh, well, Buffalo ended up blasting New England yesterday. That's true. And I yeah. didn't see that one coming. No, I didn't see it coming either. What would your thoughts be? I mean, we're not, by the way, for all of you listening, we're not going to predict the playoffs because they've already kind of started. Um, maybe at some point we would predict the Super Bowl. But my thought, I just want you to give your quick thoughts. Uh, as Browns fans, right, like – it's hard when you see another team in your division win. But uh, as you pointed out before we started recording, it's kind of, honestly, it's like, you know, congrats to them. They were kind of in the same boat we were last year. Hadn't won a playoff game in how many years? Um, what was your thoughts on that game with the Bengals and how that all played out? Well, dude, uh, <laughs> the Raiders kind of did what the Raiders did. They made things interesting. <laughs> I think they've played in four overtime games this year. And for yep. a second there, it looked like we were about to see a fifth Raider That's overtime true. game. But um, at least play-wise, I thought the Bengals really outplayed the Raiders mm -hmm. way more than the seven points that they beat them by or whatever. They just got to a point where uh, the Raiders, I think, made the adjustments that they needed to. Um, the second half – seemed to go much slower because of all the yeah. reviews and the penalties going on by both sides, to be honest. And then there's that one controversial whistle <laughs> on that one Joe Burrow touchdown to Boyd that everybody's going to be talking about that. I the really rest of their think, lives. Yeah, I really don't think it matters. Nah, because neither do I. The whistle should have never been blown to begin with, so I'm yeah. kind of cool with them not following through with that mistake. But there are going to be some Raiders fans are going to be like, well, by rule, that play should have been blown dead. The touchdown shouldn't have happened. But I don't think that it affected the play at all. Nobody stopped playing because of the whistle was kind of late. At yeah. the same time, it wasn't as soon as he threw the ball or anything like that. But fantastic game to kick off the postseason between uh i think it was a four and five seed very yeah. even teams. i was kind of pulling for the raiders just because of course of one Bengals being a division opponent never root for anybody in the afc north and two <laughs> just because i wanted to see the raiders fans kind of get a little bit of a uh, icing on the cake to the kind of season that they had with all yeah. the adversity they've had to go through i was going to mention all, that i was going to mention that yeah cut, all the injuries the firing of John Gruden that kind of set off all the chaos it would have just been really cool to see them get it one playoff win in. well I even but, say you know I even say too Josh like I don't know if you read what Derek Carr said afterwards he even said like he wants to back the interim coach right now he said we yeah. want this guy and that to me shows and and we we hear this a lot too in the sports world in the you know you being journalism you know me being in the basketball scene with coaches and stuff 
when you have a, pl- a group of players that get behind a coach that hasn't been there necessarily a super long time, that shows you that that guy has the kahunas to lead an NFL team. Like, I don't care what you say. When you have, like, Hunter Renfro having, you know, a thousand-yard season, when you have these guys that you barely heard their names come out and make these differences, like, to me, that I was also in the same boat as you. Like, of course, it's the Bengals, and I'm like, uh, I don't really want them to win because I'll hear my brother from But also, it was like, the Raiders story is just something that, that's what we look for in the NFL. You want to see that Cinderella, that kind of that story that just keeps building and building uh, to something. But at the same time, it was a great game. Again, I, I, I think we said this before we recorded. I don't see the Bengals going very far. I'm sorry, Bengals fans. I know I'm going to get a lot of slack for that. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I just don't see how they compete against some of these big teams in the AFC. But if for some reason they get to the Super Bowl, I mean, if the Buccaneers are waiting for them or <laughs> the Cowboys, whoever it is, I, I just don't know how they stop these offenses. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of offense in the AFC, right? Between yeah. the Chiefs and the Bills and the Bengals and the Titans are going to have a healthy Derrick Henry. Yep. So, which is uh, scary, that, which is scary for anybody. Like, yeah. But I'm not <laughs> sure that since he's defense uh, exactly stacks very high among those teams. Plus, I think playoff experience does matter. So yeah. that's going to obviously be a detriment to the Bengals in that regard. But Honestly, this is kind of – they've already kind of achieved more than what I think anybody could have imagined. Like, I think most people thought that – They finished it, last. Yeah. I think a lot of people thought they would finish last in division, that there'd be three playoff teams out of that division, and they would be the one left out. And yeah. it was not the only one from that division that made it. And they won a playoff game for the first well, time. Well, I will say, though, Steelers didn't make it, but I will say this. That's right. I, this is what I say, though, and I'm not a Steelers fan. I can, can't stand the Steelers. Underneath the Bengals, it's the Steelers, right? But I say this. I don't count Ben Roethlisberger out, no matter how bad he's played this year, or, or um, Mike Tomlin. I'm, they've, just, they've always been so – they've been so just weird. Like, they, they should have lost so many games this year, should have won so many games – I just it's it's that's a team also that I look at and go this could be a this could be a difference maker too is the Steelers in their defense TJ Watt off the edge uh, could be a difference maker. But speaking of TJ Watt, um, all pros, Josh, all pro teams were announced. What was that? A week ago was it announced a week ago? I can't about remember. About a week ago, yeah, yeah, I about a week ago. Think- what are your first thoughts as you look at this? Um, uh, all pro teams. We're just going to go through the first team it, as we discussed. So what is your thought on this uh, all pro pro team this year? Yeah. I mean, I think for the most part, the, I, I, who is this, the media that votes for the all pro and stuff like that. I think for the most part, they got a lot of the players that I probably would have expected to see here. Right. Um, yeah. Like your your Jonathan Taylor running back, I think that's a no brainer. Being the NFL's mm-hmm. leading rusher, as valuable as he was to the Colts, Devonte Adams, Cooper Cup at receiver, I think is expected. Debo Samuel, kind of a surprise as a third receiver to me. That was a shocker to me. Very, also very deserving, I think. At the same time, mm-hmm. with how versatile he was, and he also had a very solid season at receiver. Um, Aaron Rodgers being a quarterback will probably be debated by a handful <laughs> of people. Depending you mean, on you, mean you mean by the Tom Brady Knights? You know uh, the, the ones. Tom that... Brady Knights, yeah, that would <laughs> you could throw me in that boat too. That I don't think it really makes sense. For, I, but if you look uh, though, but Josh, honestly, if you look at their numbers side by side, the only thing that's the big difference is that Brady threw for more yards and Rodgers threw for less interceptions. If you look at their numbers side by side, it's it's almost neck and neck. In, in That's the sense a big of one. yeah, Brady had more yards and touchdowns, but he and then this might affect some people's opinion too. Brady also had 200 more attempts than Rodgers. Yeah. So, I mean, that's going to obviously lead to more yards, more touchdowns, and the yards per attempt I mean, pre, knows a pretty big stat at least in the college football world. Yeah. Rodgers I believe was 7.7 yards per attempt, Brady 7.4. Yeah. So Rodgers was getting more yards per attempt, but not so much more to the point that I'm like, okay, I mean, it makes sense for Rodgers. But yeah. I think Brady – I think I the like – the rec- a lot more, dude. I think there was a lot more from Brady. Yeah, I think the receivers was a good – it was a good chunk there, the receiver-wise. Um, I think the big difference, to be honest, was Debo Samuel. My, my choice there would have been Justin Jefferson – from the Vikings instead of Debo. 
Um, I just think Jefferson had a really good sell year. I do know that Debo was kind of a dual threat. I don't know if we could say that about wide receivers, but <laughs> that is something that you get from having him on the all yeah. team, right? Is he's not only a threat as exactly, a receiver, but he's also a threat as a runner, but as a thrower. I mean, the guy threw three passes right. this year. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say the only other thing I said, and I think we discussed this before we recorded, we thought maybe the Browns could have pulled out two on the first team on the offensive line with Teller and Batonio. Um, but obviously Batonio just made it, but I think this offense line was pretty much nailed down. Um, what do you think about that offense line? I think for the most part, that's probably what everyone would see. It's incredible, man. I mean, Tristan or Tristan, Tristan Wirfs, Trent Williams, Zach Martin, Jason Kelsey, Joel Batonio. Those are all household names. You're asking yep. football fan who some of the best offensive linemen are. These names are definitely going to get thrown in there. As a fan of the Browns, I would have loved to see Teller get in here, uh, but I know that Martin has is like, a beast he's unreal and he's a beast and i'm sure he's totally worthy and he's just I'm a freak not the greatest <laughs> judge of linemen to begin with so i couldn't tell yeah. you if martin or Batonio had the better season but <laughs> yeah i never so they do the they grading the linemen they grade the linemen and i'm always like how do you like do you judge based off how the guy <laughs> how far the guy I pushes the you, dude <laughs> I think you can look at like how many sacks did he allow? Yeah, and of course. How many yeah, yeah. Times they let someone get a tackle for loss or like get into the backfield and hit the running back. I think there's situations like that. Maybe pancake tackles is another one. Yeah. Like there's very few stats that you can use to measure, I guess, an offensive lineman. And so for the average football fan, that's going to be tough to assess football players because we like to use stats like of course Debo. yeah we like to look at rushing yards and receiving yards and passing yards for offensive linemen we don't really get much of that it's really you got to have a real football mind and yeah. be able to judge an offensive lineman that i just don't have I'll yeah and, and my question for you is and i could look at this defense this is where i think people could toss around maybe a little bit of a couple names what is your thought on i think the edge rushers if we all don't agree on this then we should just stop watching football i think these two are the best pass rushers i think tj watts the best outside linebacker edge rusher i think miles garrett is the best defensive end rusher i think you have to put them in two separate categories they're two totally different players they do the same thing, but in a different way, I think, if, if you would agree with me. Maybe you disagree, but I think they're two – they're the same type of player, but in two different roles. Yeah, I think um, there's definitely different pass rushers. Some of them can flip around. I think uh, back when DeMarcus Ware was playing, he yeah. might have switched between being a defensive end and outside linebacker. Maybe he – he was a big like, outside linebacker, though. He was about 270 <laughs> playing outside yeah. linebacker. Yeah, but – yeah, there's there's different types of pass rushers in this league, and while they might be different, Watt and Garrett, I think that's your best too. I think I think we were just talking about the Raiders that some Raider fans, yeah, Max Crosby, Max Crosby, because who is he, he's also a freak, by the way, if you watch him play, incredible this year too. Yeah, so well, even even only- Quinn though, even Quinn, you look, he had 18 sacks this year. Yeah, and he's the second team all pro. So my question is, in this defensive grouping here, is there anybody that you look at and go, I don't know if they were first team all pro. I have one guy in mind, but that's that I'll, I'll share that once. Uh, is once it Trayvon Diggs? No. Okay. Well, I'm gonna mention Trayvon Diggs because really? while I think I think that while the interception stat is sexy, yes, quarterbacks weren't too afraid of him because he allowed more yards than any other defender in the NFL and I believe he also was targeted the eighth most out of any defensive backs so while he was getting a lot of opportunities to get interceptions that I think played into it but he also wasn't doing his job as a defender like when you think of a shutdown corner we think of guys like Darrell Revis that quarterbacks never even throw the ball to and we can Bailey right champ bailey uh richard sherman like when his heyday like these were corners that quarterbacks just didn't throw to and so they weren't having the interception stats but they were taking receivers out of games they weren't allowing any yards or catches and digs while he has the interceptions and that's really cool so i suppose maybe that there is a case to be made for him being first team all pro i don't think that he's one of the best two uh corners in this league yeah, I okay, this is where mine is, okay? I, I do agree with you. I think I think t- interceptions, I think the reason why he got first team all pro is because of the first guy that had double-digit interceptions in like 30 years. Yeah. Like, 
It's it's okay. I, I get I, it. I, I like I like uh, stats like that, right? Like if somebody does something that hasn't been done for a while, I think it's worth mentioning. So I don't know. Yeah, I would say Jalen Ramsey was a lock in. I mean, that dude, he's unreal. When I, I think the one guy that's missing, I think from cornerbacks either the first or second team is Marshawn Lattimore. If you look at his numbers this year, Marshawn Lattimore was up there with the best. He didn't have the flashy numbers. He wasn't doing crazy, but he was he was rated like right up there with Jalen Ramsey. So I think that's a guy that was missing from this, from this list at some that's point. Interesting because he didn't even make second team all pro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, and the same with, I think uh, Denzel Ward is another guy that I think yeah. deserved to I be think, up there. I think Ward didn't play enough games. Yes. True. Why, but, but this is my guy. Not wise, he's one of those best corners in this league. Now I'm a high state fan, right? I'm a high state fan. <laughs> I don't believe Cameron Hayward deserved to be there. I'm just, I, I, I say that because I feel like Cam Hayward, he's always in there. I think it's just because he's just this huge mammoth of a dude that just clogs up interiors. Cause like he doesn't have flashy numbers. And I know it's not about flashy numbers. But it's I look at this up as an interior lineman to do that. Like yeah, you're not but, gonna have much I look at this though, and I look at Chris Jackson. Jones sitting there, second second team. Yeah. Chris Jones is the him and Aaron Donald are the two best interior defensive linemen by far in the NFL. It's not even close. Um that's just my thought. I mean, it could have went either way. Like, I'm not upset about it. But, um, and then of course, I think if Justin Tucker is not the best kicker in the NFL, then we all should just, you know, I mean, the dude kicks 68 yarders. And he probably can kick an 80 yarder for all we know. And they also sings opera. Like, I mean, the dude, the dude does everything. Um, but I think all those, I mean, I, special teamers, I don't really know enough about. <laughs> that sounds so terrible. I feel terrible, but <laughs> I mean, I, I don't really pay attention well, to the, I mean, the long snappers. When we, were, when we were kids, Ben, we got used to see guys like Devin Hester and Josh Cribbs. Oh, yeah. Picks for touchdowns. But we Talk really Josh Cribbs. We much return touchdowns anymore. So. Do, you, do, you, do you miss watching like Josh Cribbs and Devin Hester when they're in their heyday? I watch highlights of them all the time, and it's just amazing to watch. Yeah, their right. vision is unreal. I think the NFL knew exactly what they were doing, uh, moving the kickoff spot because it was going to lead to a lot more touchbacks and they wanted that to happen so that there would be, I guess, more safety, less injuries. Cause for, I think they said that there are a lot of the most injuries occur on the kickoff. So they wanted to try to eliminate the kickoff basically entirely without eliminating the kickoff and just saying, you got to start at the 20. So we don't really see as many of those, uh, return touchdowns anymore as a result and when you do see one it's super awesome yeah. but it really has made life difficult in the nfl as a returner because yeah. i mean you got to get the ball basically past the 20 <laughs> to be considered a really good returner so i don't know much about these guys either that are on here but i will say though I, a, matthew slater deserves a lot of credit that dude's been an all pro special team he's a second team all pro this year but he's been an all pro, I think, for like six years straight or something like that as a special he's been teamer. For a long time, he's which been is a lot of Pro Bowls too. As a people don't understand, Urban Meyer did this great. I don't know if you've ever heard him talk about this. Urban said that the best players should be playing on special teams. If they're not, they don't need to be on my team. <laughs> now, however you feel about that is you know your own thought. But to me, that's just it's so true. Like, um, it is one of those things that I think is. Um, fascinating that you know special teams are so important but also did you notice that on the second team there was no selection for running back they didn't have a second team running back at least on nfl's website i'm on nfl's website did it say on yours yeah yeah same thing on that is end. so I weird nick that. chubb nick chubb should be there i'm just saying i want to leave it at that yeah i wonder why they didn't choose a second one it's an interesting uh, fathom maybe uh, josh burris can write a story on that uh coming up maybe who knows He's he's creating a note, people. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna it's gonna come out it on the Josh. Sense that's why they would leave that off. Like I'm checking another site to see if uh, maybe they just didn't have that in there for some reason. I feel like it's one of those that it's just they. I guess it could it be the votes because there was like certain votes to certain double players because there was like a tie with players. Does that I don't know if that plays in a factor if that takes uh, people out. I think. Uh, wasn't there some kind of controversy a while ago because Christian McCaffrey made the all pro as a running back? Yeah, interest? that's true. Yeah. Yeah. People were like, that should have never happened. And maybe it's the whole Debo Samuel thing because there's only two wide receivers in the second team. So who knows? Oh. Um, but maybe that's why. Yeah. With speaking of all pro and speaking of awards, I think we're going to talk about some awards 
because we all know that's what we're here for winning awards actually real quick ben yes so we can end this and put it to bed it looks like this one article that i found in the ap yeah. they got the votes as well so there's a panel of 50 media okay. that make the votes and like for example at quarterback aaron Rodgers received 34 votes tom brady 16 votes wow that's wow yeah, that shocks so, me a little bit. Yeah, but Jonathan Taylor received all 50 votes. So oh, I so it was unanimous. Yeah, 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 that would unanimous. make sense. So there was not a That second makes sense because Cooper Cup was that. Cooper Cup was unanimous. That means there's only two receivers in the second all pro. That makes sense. Devontae Adams and Cooper Cup both were unanimous, actually. Okay, so that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes that, sense. That is the reason, but now we can move on because – Yes, awards. Awards. Uh, so, uh, Josh, where, sh where should we start with awards? Pick an award. Why where should don't we start? start with the first year guys? The rookie, okay. What's the rookie of the year defense? Okay. The year. You, you start. You start. I don't think we're going to have disagreements on this. Okay. But especially offensive rookie of the year. Now, of course. I'm going to say mine on the count of three, and you say yours on the count of three as well at the same time. And if we're oh. wrong, this podcast has to be over. I, I mean – I mean, should I, should I really, I see now I'm nervous. Cause I, I'm the guy that kind of goes outside of the, the, the square. You do, and man. I, and I'm going to light you up if you have a different. Oh boy. Oh All right. boy. On I don't like this. No, nope, don't like this. All right. All right. One, two, three. Jamar Chase. Jamar All right. Mm, <laughs> I was nervous. I was so right. nervous. My heart I was think, pounding. I think, I think Jamar Chase is a no-brainer. I, I mean, I'll just read Okay, I will, I will say this. Gathered. I, let me share my – okay, about – up. I would say five weeks ago, I had Mac Jones up there. The only reason I had Mac Jones up there was because of what Belichick – more of what Belichick had done with turning him into being a guy I didn't think was going to be that good. But also up there I had – Jamar was three for me. The guy that was also up there um, throughout the season, not so much the later in the season, Najee Harris was up there for me as well. Um, but then after a while, he just kind of faded. But uh, Jamar Chase was always going to be in there. But I, I agree with you. Like, after the season, I'm like, if it's not Jamar Chase, then we all should just not not try to vote ever again on it. Yeah, but most what, are, what are your thoughts on it? What's your thoughts on it? Most receiving yards in a season and a game by a rookie – most receiving yards in a season and a game by a Bengal. He topped 200 yards twice, 150 <laughs> yards three times, like that. I think we would like to see more consistency going forward. Yeah. Sometimes that can depend on the quarterback and how teams are defending you. But for a rookie, especially the preseason, like with all the drops and the concerns about him making the adjustments to the NFL. like. But he had chemistry, though. That's the one thing. I think – okay, I was one of those people that said – that said – you know, Jamar, they shouldn't have drafted Jamar. They should have drafted uh, Panay Sewell. I think a lot of people said that. That's what I thought. And, but then I thought about it about a couple months later. I'm like, Joe Burrow and him played together. They have the chemistry already. If you're going to sacrifice offensive line help for anybody, it's a guy that's already had chemistry. And my brother kept saying that. I didn't believe him. But now after I watched him play, I'm like, dude, this dude, it's like they're, it's poetry in motion. I mean, every time it's just like, it's it's slinging to the guy you know for so long. That's very true. And, I mean, the reason that I think you would have probably said they should have taken Panay Sewell as well because they already had T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd at receiver. Exactly. Good enough to work with now. And Joe Mixon. And Joe Mixon in the backfield. And if Joe Burrow's getting hit because he doesn't have an offensive line and he gets hurt again, like, who cares how many receivers yeah. you have? Like, you can have three Jamar Chases, but if Burrow's out here getting clobbered, because his offensive line can't protect him, what's the point of having all these receivers if he's not going to be able to throw to them? So that's kind of like my thought process. Plus, they drafted T the year before, which I thought was a steal in the second round. They had Tyler Boyd, who's also a solid yeah. receiver. So I thought they had enough to work with for now. But it ended up working out in the end. I mean, they're in the playoffs. Of course. Yeah, you're in the playoffs. I mean, you know, the Browns never draft a wide receiver that high because the freaking Browns. We draft, uh, we draft Coleman. That's who we draft in the top – 20 picks for a wide receiver because they never pan out for the Browns. That's a whole other story. But, uh, okay, defensive rookie of the year. Um, we might differ on this. No, I, I don't think we will. But who are you going with? I, I want to say a guy I want to go with, but I know who it should be. Uh, well, the guy that I'm going with, Ben's Micah Parsons, linebacker Dallas Cowboys. Guy, guy I'm going with is Micah Parsons. It's 
I, I wanted to say JOK because he doesn't have the crazy stats. Yeah. But if you looked at his season, JOK was unreal. Like he guard, he 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 went against wide receivers, against running backs, against tight ends, and but Micah Parsons was just a freak, a freak of nature. And I've told the I said the Browns. That's who they. Sh- I wish they would have gotten if they had that. If they, he would have dropped, but. You know, they still got a decent pick as well. Yeah, so. Micah, Micah in the draft, I think he was the number 15 pick, and he fell further yes. than what I thought he should have. And I think the reason for that is because for some reason there were some kind of character concerns. Yeah. And I never really got that vibe from Micah in college. I know he skipped, like, the 2020 season, but so did Chase, and that didn't affect the yep. draft stock at all. So when uh, The Cowboys Micah, hit a home run. I don't think many times. I don't think many times, Josh, we can say the Cowboys hit a home run. <laughs> oh, man. The last couple of drafts they've been hitting home runs. Dude. That is true. They got C.D. Lamb fell to them at fifteen. That guy should have been the first receiver off the board, in my opinion. Yeah. And then they end up getting a what looks to be a steal as well with Trayvon Diggs. Yeah. We were talking about uh, the interceptions there and the yards that he gives up, and I mean he's still young. He can clean things yep. up, but for the most part, he seems like a promising corner. And the Cowboys just have been hitting on all their draft picks lately. Yeah, so I think defense player of the year, rookie of the year, and def- offense rookie of the year take care of that. All right, what's our next award? What's our next award? We're gonna start debating. Maybe uh, I don't know. Let's go on to the offensive and defensive players of the year. Ooh, These okay. Are kind of interesting because it seems like the MVP is never the offensive. Exactly. Player of that's what I'm about to say. That's why it could change for us here. It's like if he's not even the best offensive player this season, why should he be the MVP? <laughs> exactly. It's kind, of, it's kind of weird how we vote on that. But yeah. after I say that, I ended up choosing guys that were different as well. All right. So should I go first? Should I go? Should I go first Let's this time? You. I've been giving my picks first. Let's All right. You. Um, I'm going to go offensive player of the year. We'll, we'll, we'll go, we'll start with that. My All offensive right. player of the year is um, Jonathan Taylor. That's my uh, offensive player of the year. I, I think one, his just development from the year is, is really crazy. But I mean, when you watch him play, he's just, he's something, he's a lot like he's a, I would say he's a different built, but similar to Nick Chubb in the sense that he's physical, but he's nimble on his feet at the same time. He catches the ball. He can run with it. Um, Jonathan Taylor is kind of mine. I will say I do have different for uh, MVP, so I'm not going to go back to back here. Um, And then, yeah, so that's mine. We'll go to your offensive player of the year first, and then we'll debate. Yeah, at least uh, something that I Googled. I Googled what the Offensive Player of the Year was, and it's supposed to be the most outstanding offensive season. So I don't really know how – I'm sure people judge that on different metrics, but I went with Cooper Cup because – That was my that was my number two. That was kind of the guy I was thinking of as number two. Triple crown winner at receiver. Yeah. He's only the fourth guy to do that in the Super Bowl era. Lee and he was NFL. what, 15 yards? Was he 15 yards short of the record or something like that? Very close to Calvin, but he also had an extra game to get there. True. <laughs> Still, though, nobody was even close as he was. He led the league in yards, touchdowns, catches. Receptions. Like, there's not too many guys that do that anymore, obviously being only the fourth one. So, I'm yeah. just like, that's something that rarely happens. That's got to be the most outstanding offensive season to me. But, I mean, Jonathan Taylor, like you mentioned, also has a great case. Anytime that he rushed for over 100 yards this season, the Colts were undefeated. So, yeah. maybe they should have. Fed him the ball just a little bit more. You know what I mean? Uh, well, uh, who does that sound like, Josh? Wait, what's another? Oh, oh, the Browns, right. You know. Yeah, we just talked about that last yeah. week. The teams that have these great running backs that just don't want to use them for some reason. <laughs> it's like Carson Carson Wentz and Baker Mayfield. I don't think they're really on the same level as those two running yeah. backs. But Titans, take notes on the Titans. They got Derrick Henry. They feed that guy. They have Ryan Tannehill, who's not exactly an elite QB, but they know who they are, and they own it. And they don't try to hide. And they also have a great coach in Mike Vrabel, too. That's Ooh. another great point. So we go yeah. from offense. We're going to go to defense play of the year. And this is where I think there could be a lot of debate. A lot There's of a debate. a lot of guys that I've heard debated all year. Now, I'm – so this is where I'm going to go. I, I have two things here, okay? I have my gut pick, and I have my what I know the whole world's going to pick. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes okay. sense. So my gut pick or really what I want to pick is I think um, – uh, first, I'm going to start off – I'm not going to do that one first. Well, maybe I am. Yes, I am. So it uh, would be Miles Garrett. That's my – That's my, oh, why is it doing this? Sorry, my audios stop. There we go. Um, so it's Miles Garrett. Miles, that's who you would pick. That's who I would pick. Now, who do I think the whole world's going to pick? It's T.J. Watt. 
Um, I look at Miles Garrett and I look at his season, right? And I see a guy who has just completely taken over, um, taken over every facet of the game. He can stop the run. He deflects passes like none other. And he forces bad passes. He takes up double teams, triple teams sometimes. And yeah, he, he slowed down at the end of the year. So I think that's what's also going to play the factor. But again, my gut is Miles Garrett, who do I think they're going to choose TJ Watt. I mean, when you have over 20 sacks, it's just, it's kind of a no brainer. What, what is your thought? Yeah, man. Another thing about Miles too that I'll throw in there is when he gets his hands on somebody, it's most likely going to be a tackle. It's he, only two, he only had two missed tackles all season, which is really freaking good. But I'm going to go with Watt. Uh, I think the numbers, first in sacks, first in QB hits, first yeah. in little pressures, tied for first in tackles for loss. Like It's just very hard to argue against that collectively. But Miles had some decent numbers himself. He was tied for first with Watt in pressures. He was second in QB hits. Tied for second in QB knockdowns. I don't really know how that's different. But also third in sacks. Tied for sixth in tackles for loss. Like, he had a heck of a season as well. But I think Watt just the, – his stats appear to be just a little bit better. Yeah, and I mean – and I also – I think a guy that is, could be a sneaky dark horse is Nick Bosa. If you look at Nick Bosa's numbers, those numbers are crazy. And a lot of people are talking to him as a dark horse of kind of a guy that could come into this uh, – the race. I don't think it would happen, but – that's just what you know people are mentioning but so yeah those are the defense offense player of the year so what's the next award mr um, josh you come up with a coach of the year and comeback player of the year? yes i did because right. i'm always prepared josh always prepared that's good i know those are like some of the words that most people don't pay much attention to. yes i do have a coach of the year but i'll let you go the coach of the year first because yeah i haven't decided 100 percent, and maybe you can sway me one way or the other okay i've narrowed it down to mike vrabel and matt lafleur i think mike both of these guys have led their teams to one seeds and a lot of times that's good enough for somebody to vote for a guy to be coach of the year, or yeah. it's because they took a team that was terrible the last several years and they turned the franchise around and brought him into the playoffs. Yeah. But let me talk about Vrabel's body of work, overcoming injuries to the team like Derrick Henry, Julio Jones, mm -hmm. AJ Brown, other guys on that defense were banged up this season. And he still managed to keep this team together and reach that one seed. And he's just kind of slowly built the Titans over the last couple of years into like the monster that they are today. Yeah. And then you flip over to Matt LaFleur. Packers became the first team, I believe, to win three or 13 games, three straight seasons. And LaFleur was a part of all three of those. They clinched the one seed this year. They overcome, I guess, some drama in the offseason with Rodgers, <laughs> whether or not that dude was going to come back. And LaFleur steers them to another 13 win season. So I think both of these guys yep. have excellent cases. I agree. But who do you think? Uh, might mine, have an edge here because I honestly don't. Know. Mine has been Lafleur. Lafleur. I can't ever say his name. Lafleur. Yes. Lafleur. Whatever. Lafleur. Whatever his name is. Yes. Yeah, so that's who I had. I had him from the beginning. I think you look at this team that was such in scattered drama and was like a teenage girl going through all the drama in the world, right? And you look at how he's calmed it, and and I give credit to him to talking to to Aaron and saying, "Hey, this is your team." you do what you want, right? They had the controversy two years ago when they drafted Jordan Love, who's a, it was the stupidest pick of all time. Um, but you, what you see is, is I look at Mike Vrabel. I agree with you. I think Mike Vrabel, a high state guy, right? So I, I'm all for Mike Vrabel. I think the difference is that LeFure has kind of kept this pace, whereas Mike Vrabel seems to like, I think this year it's really close. But I just think this year LeFure has shown that he can – it doesn't matter what the controversy he's going to win. And I think the same was for Mike Rabel, but I think consistency of his team would go to the Packers. I think if you can mark that down too. That's fair enough. And again, like I think some of that inconsistency, if there was any on Rabel's side was just because they were taking a lot of punches mid season, like yeah. losing Derek Henry, I think like the ninth or eighth game of the season, something like that. And then they did have Julio and AJ out together, I believe for a couple of times as well. Yep. So just having to make adjustments there. I think it may have been what caused maybe some kind of a midseason stumbling block right there. But, I mean, LaFleur, the consistency is definitely there. He's done this year after year after year. So, Yeah, and I agree with you, and uh, it's definitely an interesting case. And I always love seeing these. I mean, Stefanski won it last year, which was awesome. 
Um, yeah, but we have one more before the MVP, and that's comeback player of the year. I have a good one that actually – I don't know if you have it or not, but I will, I will go with this one. I have it's heard some buzz about some certain guys. Like when I was initially thinking of guys that I might pick, I thought maybe Debo Samuel, but I don't think that he was – missing enough games last yeah. season at least I, and then i thought maybe joe burrow but i don't know if that man was established enough in this league to really be considered a comeback player yeah so i rolled with nick bosa because okay okay I rolled, I rolled with nick because he only played two games last season tore an acl he's been in this league i think this is his third season so still not super long but a little longer than joe people knew him as a threat in this league Tears his ACL, comes back this season, gets 15 and yeah. a half sacks. He's tied for first in the league in tackles for loss. The man was making plays. Couldn't even tell that he was hurt last year. That's a good one. Uh, I might shock you. I don't know if I will or not. Um, I'm going to go with Robert Quinn. Robert Quinn, who didn't – he only missed one game last year, but, hear me out, had two sacks last year and had uh, – and only had a total of like 20 tackles all year. This year, he turns around with 18 and a half sacks. I just, that's what I always like to look at. I mean, injury, yes, but I think you look at a guy whose production, who, by the way, after last year, people were saying Robert Quinn's going to get, they're going to just release him. He's not worth the money, all these different things. And it goes to show, like, the dude still has, I mean, he put up almost 19 sacks and yeah. proved over and over again. So that's my guy, Robert Quinn. Um, I think I like it, ben. deserves it. it. It doesn't always have to be, I guess, coming back from an injury. It can just be coming back from a bad season. Exactly. Exactly. Cool so at. that leaves us with uh, with one big award. Our MVP. Yes, which will be debated, I'm sure, because I know where you're sliding with this almost 100%, <laughs> and I'm getting ready to debate it. Cause, all right, man. All right, you, you go, because let's just get it over with, because we all know where you're going with this. Ben, you know I got to go with Tom Brady, man. The man doesn't age. The man continues to throw up the most insane numbers of his career, even 25 years or whatever the heck it's been in this league. Continues to roll with the punches, especially later in the season, losing guys like Godwin, the whole A-B fiasco. Leonard Fournette's been out. So, he, I mean, this, is, this playoff run is going to be, I guess – I don't want to call it a test because he still has guys like Mike Evans or yeah. Rob Gronkowski. Like, he still has weapons on this team. More than he had, I guess, than the end of his time at New England, but still not exactly the star-studded roster that he had last year. So it will be a little bit more difficult. But Brady came out and made more of an impact than I think he did even last year as well. He got better than what he did last year. Man, All right. Play. All right. Well, I am, uh, I'm not going to shock many people. I think here people know that I like Tom Brady. Like he's, I think he's the greatest of all time. I, I'll never debate that. But I think this year I'm going to have to go with Aaron Rodgers. I, 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 I mean, he doesn't have as great a numbers as last year, right? I look at his numbers. He had 48 touch, by the way, which is just ridiculous last year, 48 touchdowns to five picks last year. This year he has four picks 37 touchdowns, three for 4,100 yards, completion percentage almost at 70%. Now, the reason I'm going with him, right? I, I think, I think one, I think, to be honest with you, Josh, I could flip a coin and whatever side lands on, I'm not going to be upset about it. Like 100%. Like you look at this, but I do think Aaron Rodgers, I think in the general scheme of, at times he looked, a little bit better like early early in the year I think he looked really good at times and then he kind of died off I think Tom Brady had that same thing this year where there was a, a stretch where he kind of struggled a little bit I think that was with it was middle of the year where he had kind of a down a little down spell so again I I say it could be just because I don't want Tom Brady to win it <laughs> it could be the very reason why I choose it but I think too I think if you look both guys and you could probably attest to this I think you could really be okay with either one because of what they've done with their team, both their teams being very good, but then also just overall the the strength of what these guys have done in the season as well. Yeah, I mean, on one end, you could say Rodgers is more efficient. He had more yards per attempt. He less had interceptions. Less interceptions. He was higher in QBR and passer rating. Not much more than Brady, but still higher nonetheless. And Brady 
had I think I said 200 more attempts, yeah. but he had, and he as a result had more passing yards and passing touchdowns. So I guess on one end of the spectrum, you could be like Tampa Bay needed Brady to do more to have the season mm-hmm. that they had. So and he delivered, but you can also look on one other end and be like Rogers got to do, I guess more with less not in terms of like total volume because obviously yeah. he didn't have yards and touchdowns but per attempt numbers and he also has less i mean he up. you think about it he only has really Devonte adams i mean you look at this team i'm not saying it's a bad team by any means the packers but you look at brady right he had who do you have he had brown for a while till brown got released you had evans you had godwin gronkowski you know i will say both guys didn't really have a run game <laughs> <laughs> both guys didn't really have a run game. So, I mean, you look in the, and Rodgers maybe doesn't have the same talent out there outside of Devontae Adams than, let's say, the the Buccaneers have. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. But I just – I look at the two lineups and see that. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, Packer fans will tell you that Aaron Jones is also a really solid receiver out of the backfield. Yeah. That's always nice to have for checkdowns. Alan Lazard kind of – I don't want to say broke out, but he took a step forward. He did, yeah. Last season. I, he's still not exactly a bona fide number two wide receiver, but not terrible. Like, I won't really give anybody that benefit for Rodgers saying he doesn't have anybody to throw to because he does have some guys, but I will agree that he doesn't have the guys that Brady has. Yeah, and also give it out to Gronk. I mean, this dude just every year just comes out and like he doesn't study the playbook. So the rumor is that he comes and Tom basically gives him like eight different routes to run throughout the year and he just runs them. Like that's that's what he does. He doesn't really run routes at practice. Supposedly he just comes in, he runs the routes that he's told to run and that's it. And then he goes home like... <laughs> I don't care. You're making $8 million a year. Who cares? At that rate, who cares? That's very odd. It also takes patience from a quarterback to be okay with that, too, because... And the fact that Tom waited to stay in the game on the last week of the year because he knew if he got one more pass to Gronk, Gronk would win, get his million-dollar bonus. It's like, that's called yeah. friendship. <laughs> Tom, Tom has, at the end of his career, been a guy that's looking out for guys like I agree. That. He's, taking, he's taking pay cuts. He's taking pay cuts so yeah. more guys can come and join the team, yeah. Uh, which is crazy. And I think we look at all these different guys, and it's so cool. You see, and where does this all start? It starts when they get drafted. Right, Josh? They get drafted. Uh, you know, maybe the sixth round, like Tom Brady, or maybe in the top 10, um, like some of these other guys. So Josh and I, in our great wisdom, our ultimate wisdom of everything and anything draft related, I don't know. That's not me. That's more Josh. But we said we weren't going to do a full mock draft of the first round because there's a lot of teams that are still going to be shifting and it would just annoy us to have to like rotate our, our draft boards. But we said the top 10 right? Um, the Browns aren't in there. Who knows? Maybe they'll trade up. Oh, wait, no, they're the Browns. We don't trade up. We just trade out. We're down. Um, so we're going to talk about it. We do have two teams that have multiple picks in the f- top 10. So this will make it interesting. Um, so I'm going to go over the draft order real quick for all of you listening or watching at home. Uh, the Jaguars had the first pick. Then it goes Lions, Texans, Jets, Giants, Panthers, Giants, Falcons, Broncos, Jets, which is just weird that New York teams have had. That's just rigged. That's what that is. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, you're just bad. <laughs> you're just yeah, bad. It's going in NY. Um, so uh, I think what we'll start with, we'll go pick by pick and kind of explain kind of why we chose uh, these guys. Um, Josh, I want you to go first. Introduce who you think will go number one to the Jacksonville Jaguars without Urban Meyer, uh, with yeah. who knows who. I don't think Jaguars fans thought they'd be in this position. Nope. <laughs> once again this season, but here they let's are. Let's be honest. By the way, before we go on, let's talk about the disappointment of the year would be Lawrence was very disappointing. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen some uh, memes with uh, his stats lined side by side next to <laughs> I saw Jamarcus. Jamarcus. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, he, he put those numbers up for sure, but I also. He has more talent, though. He has more I talent. I'm not a guy that's going to give up on a player after one year. I'm just not he, going to do it. I don't think that's he, fair. I don't think he had a lot to work with. 
but and I also think though a lot of adversity with Meyer and just other clown shows going on. But I also think he didn't, uh, you know, watch a blank DVD and then come back and say that he loved all the plays either. So For sure. that did not, you know, happen. that didn't yeah. happen. So Josh, you who do you got the Jacksonville Jaguars, Jaguars taking? Yeah. Well, Ben, I mean, he, could, you could say that Lawrence was even worse than Jamarcus because he put up all these numbers, totally educated with the full knowledge <laughs> of the playbook. It still was bad. But I digress. I'm not giving up on Trevor after one year. But my True. number one pick, I'm seeing a, most of the mock drafts seem to be going either Kayvon Thibodeau or Aiden Hutchinson at number one. And I've kind of been a big fan of Thibodeau since uh, last season. I thought that was going to be a guy that was going to be the best pass rusher in this draft. And, I mean, the dude's a huge freak of nature. I think he's, he's going to have freak. an insane combine. He's going to be one of those combine athletes for sure. And uh, I would take him over Hutchison right now based on uh, what I've seen from these guys. Maybe uh, they will have some stuff show up at the combine that will make me change my mind. But I think Hutchison kind of got thrusted up to this spot, too, because of his performance against Ohio State, because I never heard Jeez. any Hutchison number yeah, one same. talk until he had, like, what was it? it it's all, it, Ohio State. Hey, it's everyone hates Ohio State, okay? That's why. Okay, it's just a it's a fact yeah. us Ohio State fans live with. I mean, to Hutch's Hutch's credit, he had a lot of uh, big numbers in Michigan's bigger games this year. True, Ohio State being one of them. But I also saw him get manhandled several times. He got manhandled in sometimes. That playoff game. So I'm not sure the strength is entirely there yet. I know the Georgia O line is. They're I mean, good. They put, put guys in the NFL. It's a very good, big and strong line. But Hutch is going to see bigger guys than that in the NFL. So for now. I'm going to go with KT as the number one pick to the Jags. I would have to agree with you. Uh, I'll give my explanation here. Um, I, I've been tossing around who would the Jaguars take, right? Like you look at that team, what do they need? They need everything. Um, right. And <laughs> when you need everything, you take the best player available. And I would say, you know, I could easily see them going Evan Neal here, right? Like I wouldn't be shocked. Like it wouldn't, or they trade down to get Evan Neal. I wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me. Um, because they need help on about every front. But you look at Kayvon Thibodeau, he is a freak of nature, a guy who is a – he's like the Miles Garrett of a few years ago. He's just a guy that you know is going to come in. He's going to get you 10 sacks a year. It's, it's going to happen. Um, so I have Kayvon Thibodeau um, for pretty much the same reasons as you. Um, I just – I don't think there's anybody better on the defense or offensive side of the ball. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to go with into my second pick here, which is the Detroit Lions. Haven't they been here before? Feels like a lot. Um, so here we go. I'm going – he is staying home. I'm going Aiden Hutchinson, number two, to the Detroit Lions. I just think it's a cool story, one. But, two, I just think he does have the talent. And I think with – them going offensive line last year, I don't see them getting rid of Taylor Decker yet and going offensive line again. So I really think they're going to go, hey, let's just get the next best player. And I think Aiden Hutchinson is in the top three of the best players. So I think Aiden Hutchinson goes number two. Yeah, I'm with you, Ben. I just figured, you know, if they're talking right now that KT and Hutch are going to be in that number one pick talk, whichever one isn't going to get picked first is going to go second. Plus, you get the feel-good story of staying home in Detroit. So, yeah, I got Hutchison at number two as well. Yeah, so there's those. All right, what about number three? We got the Texans, who, by the yeah. way, most likely, we don't know this, but I'm pretty sure they're not going to have Deshaun Watson next year. They're going to stay with David Mills. So That's going to be interesting, yeah. So they fired their head coach not too long ago either. So this is Poor guy. The poor guy lasted one year. <laughs> Just, yeah. See ya. Dragging that team to four wins should have gotten him a raise, probably. But Something. That team said. was bad. So, yeah, I mean, we talked about this with the Jags. There's a lot of needs there, so you usually take the best available. And Texans kind of need a lot of guys because of the position that they've they been just need them. Put in. <laughs> yeah, with all the guys that they traded, Bill O'Brien basically screwing the whole franchise. Deshaun Watson probably not going to be with the team much longer, if at all, anymore. Yeah. So. Who do you got? The best player available here is going to be Evan Neal, tackle from Bama. Dude, they we are. They have dude, we are on fire. They have a reputation of putting out good NFL offensive linemen, big and yeah. strong. There's a couple solid linemen in this draft, and from the mocks that I've seen so far, from buzz that I'm hearing, is that Neal is 
the de facto number one offensive line. So we'll so, go with them. Everything starts with offensive line. I think in the NFL, you need that to open up holes in the running game. To a get good left tackle. Question. So we will go with a great tackle to complete this rebuild or start this rebuild. I would say um, we are on fire, Josh. We are just thinking in sync, right? Um, I was going to – there was a chance I was going to go Derek Stingley here, a really good chance um, because – He's just been too injury prone for me to really think the Texans should go with him. I think if you want David Mills as your quarterback, if that's who you're saying is your guy, um, I could see them reaching and getting a quarterback here or trading down. But I think Evan Neal is just a guy you can't pass on. The dude is huge. I mean, he's a he's a freak of nature. Um, and I think you get a left tackle, whoever's quarterback, it's going to be good for them. Um, so I have Evan Neal. Um, going to the Texans. Now we move into J E T S Jet. Never mind. I'm sorry. Um, we're gonna go to the Jets now, and uh, one of two picks they have in the top ten. Obviously, they picked a quarterback last year who, let's say, he had an okay year. He he struggled. Wilson. He wasn't amazing. Um, but I think, and I don't know if this might shock you. I don't know. Uh, I'm going with Derek Stingley, uh, quarter cornerback out of LSU. I know he is injury prone, but I think. Their defense was so bad, like was really bad. And um, I mean, they were just bad anyways. But I think if they can add someone that can mark up against, you know, the Buffalo Bills receivers and some of these guys, I think then maybe you start something there. And then you'll see who I have for the next pick. Um, might shock a few people, but go ahead. Yeah, number four, I have Stingley as well. So we're four for four so far. <laughs> we are on I, a roll. I was looking at that defense, and I mean, the Jets ranked. They're so bad. The NFL <laughs> They're in so bad. A lot of the stats. And I wanted to, I think they were dead last in rush defense. They so were. Part of me wanted to go with like maybe a sleeper pick of Jordan Davis here. Ooh. But Ooh. I know they also. Uh, they just they don't go that high though they don't go that high yeah i don't know if that might be a reach of taking davis at number four maybe that's something that they could do at that 10 pick perhaps but mm -hmm. that's also i think they took like some defensive line guys the last couple of drafts like quinn and williams yep another bama product so i figure maybe they would try to address the secondary and try to clean up the pass defense a little bit and Derek stingley had an insane freshman season when he was totally healthy mm -hmm. i believe part of that 2019 lsu championship team he was a man, freak was incredible freak. yeah man it was incredible we haven't heard much from him these he's been hurt years. he's been hurt a lot because of injuries because lsu also hasn't been the dominant They're just so bad <laughs> but stingley i think is cornerback number one and that'd be a solid pick for these Jets here at number four. All right, now we move on to the next the next New York team. Go ahead. Next New York team at number five. So I think we're going to see quarterbacks get reached on like we do every year. It's we so reached talk here. Talk about how this class of QBs isn't that great, but just simply because of the fact that they're quarterbacks and usually teams that are at the top of the draft need quarterbacks, they're going to go early. They're not going to go early like in the one-two like they – I think we yeah. had three quarterbacks taken in a row last year. But here's my first quarterback getting off the board, Ben, at number five to the Giants. I think they've had enough of Daniel Jones. They're ready to move on that man. They're going to have a new general manager in town who's going to want his quote-unquote guy. A lot of GMs want to have their own guy, their quarterback. So they're going to take, I believe, at number five, Kenny Pickett. Dude, stop it. We need to stop yeah, doing this. This, well. this looks like we just started talking about this before. I'm just going to be afraid. And Josh, you're going to quote this. We didn't say anything about our top tens. We mentioned we had some shockers, but we didn't talk about who was going where. Correct, right? Dude. Correct? This like, we didn't say anything. Like, there's a lot of different routes that teams can go. Like, Kenny, I think, is going to be. That's who I have, by the way. That's, that is who I have. At yeah, five. like other quarterbacks that. I've seen thrown around in the mix, you know, are guys like Malik Willis from Liberty, uh, Sam Howe from North Carolina, Matt Corral from Ole Miss. Like, those are all guys that probably will go in the first round at some point. But Kenny was a Heisman finalist this season. I would have loved to have seen him compete in that bowl game uh, against Michigan State. That would have been fun, him against Kenneth Walker, but they both sat out. So I would say, um, for me, I think Kenny Pickett makes sense because he has the most experience. Kenny Pick has been there for I feel like ever um at at Pitt and he said a lot of, he's he said a lot of records but he's just he looks the most NFL ready. If you look at all those guys, he looks the most NFL ready. I think the Giants 
they need a guy that can that can do that. Now again, it's the New York Giants. They'll probably screw this up and they'll probably draft some dude that we've never heard of, and then they'll just be right back where they were. Who knows? Um, but that that's that's what the Giants. I'm going to move on to pick six, which is the Panthers. Which I think here we get we differ. I think this is where we both start going a completely different routes. Um, right. I. So I'm going with, I think they need help on the offensive line. I think many people can say that. I think they have a running back. They have sort of a quarterback. I I mean, who is it? (laughs) It's the same Darnold. Is it Cam Newman or is it Sam Darnold? Um, And they could go wide receiver as well. I'm going with Ikem Ekowanu from NC State, a offensive lineman. I was thinking about going Charles Cross from Mississippi State. I think you get the best best I think overall need and I think like you said it starts with the offensive line and I think that's where they go with I think they'll get it I think they'll trade back up and trade back into the first round to get a quarterback but I think they're not willing to risk spending that much money if they don't see a guy that's going to win them a bunch of games so that's who I got I I IKM Ekowano yeah, so we are going to differ here, Ben. Oh. But I'm, I'm, I am on the same page of you as what they should do. I think they should go offensive line because they were, I believe, in the top five in sacks allowed. And regardless of who you're going to have at quarterback, that's never going to work out. Yeah. But I also think that Carolina might be in the mindset of, we got like a bunch of crapshoot at QB right now. We got Darnold <laughs> here, we got PJ Walker, and we got Cam Newton. It's like backyard football. <laughs> None of those guys are a long-term solution to the team. So perhaps they address offensive line later, but I think they're going to try and reach for a quarterback here at number oh, six boy. and take Matt Corral. from. Yeah, that, I mean, that would be a good one. It, it would make sense. He's probably the next best ready quarterback. Yeah. Matt, the- Matt, I think, was uh, one of the top two QBs preseason. I think yeah. it was uh, him, Spencer Rattler, maybe Sam Howell were being yeah. talked about. Spencer Rattler, man, that dude's not even going to be in this draft. It's true. Season true. Had, but yeah, I, I like Matt Corral a lot. Um, I don't like him to go sixth, but this is more of like my prediction of why I think Caroline will go. And yeah. I think we'll try to take a QB that can be a long-term solution. Yep. I would have to understand that and sort of agree. So we go for the Panthers. Now we're back to the New York Giants. They have two picks and three picks, so that made no sense. But yeah, so... Who do you have them picking here? And I think we might differ here. We might, or we might be on the same page. Yeah. So I thought maybe the Giants would go offensive line five when I was putting this together and then QB. And But I think you're going to be more dead set on a QB. Like we got to make sure we get Kenny. Yeah. And then we'll take the best available offensive line. I think that's a more uh, common process. So I think the Giants are going to go offensive line here and take Tyler Lindenbaum, center from Iowa. Oh, big, a center, a center in the stuff. top 10. That's unheard of. That's unheard of. Go center. But solid offensive lineman. He's good. Iowa. He could play guard too. I think he can rotate between the, the I ends. I think centers can do that. Yeah. And the big 10 puts out solid offensive linemen. We see them come out of Wisconsin. We see them come out of Iowa. We see them come out of Michigan. Like these guys in the big 10 just are usually pretty good offensive linemen, similar to the guys that Bama and Georgia put out. So Maybe it won't be Linden, um, but I think they will take offensive line here because they got their quarterback, Kenny, and now they got to protect yeah. him with a guy like Linden Mom. So we agree, in a sense. We agree on the offensive line. I'm going with Charles Cross, so I'm going back-to-back offensive linemen, back-to-back picks. I think they get, you know, Kenny Pickett with their quarterback, and then they get that, you know, left or right tackle, whichever side you want to play Charles on. Um, I think he's a very underrated Lyman, I think he's very underrated. Him and both Ikem are both kind of underrated. Um, but I could see them going some type of lineman, you know, in some point uh, in the draft. So that's where they're going with that. Moving on to the Falcons. This is the weird one. Yeah. This is one I had no idea what I'm going to do because they have very good weapons on the outside. Yeah. Uh, you know, Matt Ryan, the Cougar quarterback, right? Replace Matt Ryan, which is where I was heavily leaning towards. Then I thought, why not just make this so weird and so out there? I'm going George Carl Carla. Can ever say that Carl to lift this. Yeah. The guy that's, that's from Purdue. Yeah. So he's the defense fan from Purdue can play the inside and outside. Um, I think he's a very underrated player. He's very big and physical. And I think the Falcons really need that guy that can be that outside physical, tough mentality. Um, so I'm going uh, George 
George K. That's what I'm going to call him because I butcher his last name. Um, so that's who I'm going with. I almost guarantee you're going quarterback here, aren't you? Uh, I have this uh, funny feeling. Oh. Uh, the Falcons were a tough one for me to decide, though. And you mentioned the picks that they got on offense. They addressed uh, weapons with Kyle Pitts last year. Yep. Maybe, and this is something that we'll have to wait and see if Calvin Ridley will be True. A trade. People. They're saying the Browns might be his place, which I'm like, please no. Please yeah. no. I don't want him. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe uh, that will amount to needing a receiver here, and they address that early on. But I'm going on the defensive side here, and I'm going Kyle Hamilton. So that makes sense. Game. He yeah. was he was up there for me, but I feel Kyle Hamilton's kind of been in a weird season where I haven't really – he's just kind of been in a weird year for him. So I think safety is not one that I didn't think was going to go that high. I have him right there at like 11 or 12. It's I mean, it's, he's right yeah. there. I think, I just I don't think know he's definitely a top 10 talent but I'm not sure which team makes the most sense for him to go. So the Falcons is kind of like, I'm kind of jamming him in there. I don't know if that's like the best pick for them, but he's also kind of like the best player available to me in a sense. Yeah. So I agree. I think, I think he could go top 10. We'll see uh, again, like what the Falcons decide to do with some of these guys and see what other needs might evolve. But for now I'm going to Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton. That's where it's at. Um, so now we have the Broncos, which is, I think it's another interesting one. Um, you know, they had a decent year. Uh, the Browns beat them. So that's all I love about it. Um, so what is your thought? I think we could differ here uh, on which side of the ball they go with here. Yeah. So the Broncos, man, they've just kind of been stuck in like mediocrity. the last <laughs> years. They've been, Since like, Peyton left. They've just been good enough to like not get these high picks that could like help them complete their rebuild. And they've been bad enough that they've been missing the playoffs like yep. ever so slightly. So the offense, I think, is pretty solid. That like they got some good offensive lineman picks. They could maybe add another guy there to get some depth. They got mm -hmm. a great running back in Javante Williams. They got great receivers that they've been drafting. Guys like Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and uh, what's the man's name? Uh, KJ Hamler. That yeah. dude. So I think the offense is good for now, except quarterback. But as we talked already. I don't yeah. think there's any quarterbacks that are going to change a franchise around here. And John Elway, he hasn't exactly been a QB guru over there with some of these guys that he's so drafted bad. and he signed. But even Elway, I think even John Elway will not make a mistake of taking one of these guys as a top 10 pick. So I think they're going to go on the defensive side of the ball here and take a linebacker in Nakobe Dean. Wow. We are we, okay. We're back on, we're back on the same mentality here. Uh, yeah. I really liked uh, what he did at Georgia this year. He was one yeah. of the leaders of that star studded defense. He made some big plays in that championship game that you correctly predicted. I will give you credit. You went with Georgia. They ended up pulling the W and I think Nakobe Dean. I called it. I called it. I said, if they take, okay, so James Williams getting hurt. I'm sorry. I, we want to give our thoughts to him, but I said, if they can stop Jamison Williams, they have a chance they to win that game. game entirely. <laughs> that is true. Uh, <laughs> so by the game, I don't know because that injury was kind of self-inflicted, but it's true. Again, that knee, man, it just looked really bad. Like nothing that the defenders did. You just kind of like landed on it weird, but yeah, it's, it's some, uh, Nicobe Dean. Yes. That's who I have. Uh, I think that was their weakest spot on defense. When I played the Browns, I noticed their, their linebackers can't tackle. Like they're just bad like one of the worst tackling groups I've seen. So I think Nicobe Dean fits great in that group. Um, former Buckeyes are actually on that team as well, which is kind of cool. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I'm going Georgia linebacker, Nicobe Dean. Now here comes the Jets at 10. And this yeah. is where I'm about to get really interesting because I think we both agree wide receiver might happen here. I think we both can agree this. Now who goes here is where I'm about to shock people, okay? Um, I think – despite having a torn ACL, I believe Jameis Williams will go right here to the Jets. I think you look at this guy, whether he's three-fourths of what he was, he can blow a top off the defense any chance he gets at any moment. I think that the Jets will look at Jameis Williams partly because it's the Jets and they'll see injury and go, ooh, we won him. Um, but uh, I think this makes sense for the Jets. Uh, I think they could go Garrett Wilson here. I think that's the other one that makes sense. Or even, um, I mean, even they could go 
complete opposite and go something totally off the wazoo, or it could trade out. I could see them trading out of this. Um, but I do believe my pick is Jameis Williams uh, from Alabama and Ohio State. I like to point that out. So, All right, Ben. Well, I am with you on taking a receiver. However, this Jets wide receiver room already has one Jameson in it, Jameson Crowder, and they don't have room <laughs> for two. So I'm going with – the true wide receiver one of this draft class, Garrett Wilson, as much as it pains me as a Browns fan. I think that's part of the reason, Josh. Part of the reason why I think I have... predict Garrett to fall to the Browns? Is that hey, play? listen, Josh. Josh, they'll find out soon enough what my, what my rest of my mock draft is. I'm not <laughs> preloading anything. They'll find us out. They'll find it out. All right. Well, yeah, Garrett, Garrett's going to be the first receiver, I think, taken off the board here. And I almost went the Jordan Davis route here to fix that defensive line and the rush defense. But you drafted a guy like Zach Wilson, and you need to get him some weapons. Now, they did draft Elijah Moore round two last year out of Ole Miss, and he led the team in receiving yards this year. I think you need to go and get another guy to help him out. And but I let's be honest, Josh, it's the Jets. Do we really think they're going to make these two picks good, like in your gut? Are you like the Jets are going to make this right? I don't know if they'll make it right, but they have kind of done what people have predicted them to do. That is I true. Think their first round picks, like people predicted they would take Zach Wilson, and they did that. They predicted that they would take Quinn and Williams the year before, and they did do that. So maybe they will take Stingley since that's yes kind of what we're seeing. But the tenth pick that could maybe go a, a several different routes. Yeah. So that that for everyone that is our mock. That's our point five mock draft. It's like the you know, the first part. We still um, need the entire order to be solidified yes. by the playoff outcomes. We need teams to make some moves in free agency and trades. Yeah. Some more coaches to maybe get fired and hired, and then we will be able to completely come up with. Yes. And we will give you a most likely, especially when April comes around, we'll give you a draft preview, especially as Josh is doing the combine. We'll definitely make sure we, we hear from what he's seen and maybe that will change completely what we're looking at. Um, and I think for that one, it will be the whole podcast will basically just be our preview. It will just be 32, 32 teams. What's the, what's the 32 picks going to be like in the first round? I think it could be interesting. Um, again, I think, the Browns need to make this smart. Please, please, Cleveland, please draft a wide receiver. I'm sorry. Just the once for once draft a receiver. That's good. Please <laughs> don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. But Josh, what are any uh, final thoughts here as we continue watching the playoffs, as we kind of wrap up the whole football season, what are your final thoughts here as we, we head into these uh, next few playoff games? Mm. I mean, I'm I'm trying to figure out a team that I want to win now, Ben, because the That's Browns true. did not make it, and the Raiders, who I kind of hopped on the bandwagon early on, are out of the playoffs now. So now I kind of am thinking I would love to see Matthew Stafford get a ring, but I also am not willing to see OBJ get a ring, so <laughs> I can't root for the Rams. Um, <laughs> I go Packers. I kind of want to, I I kinda wanna, um, see. I think it would be fun to watch Kyler make a run all the way, but yeah. I also, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big Brady guy, like we've been talking about, and I would love to see him continue to ball out and uh, maybe prove some of these guys wrong that think that since he doesn't have AB and Godwin for this playoff run, that he isn't going to be able to get it done. I agree with you. I think that's going to be fun to watch. I think as much as I'm not a Steelers fan, I think it'd be really cool to see Big Ben make a run one last time. Uh, you know, I love him mainly because he's from Ohio. He's from near my hometown. Um, he, my dad, like my cousins know his family. Like it's really, it's really, he's a really great guy. Um, but I would say I want to see the Packers do really well. I think, um, I really, I just, you know, it's something about the Packers, the legacy of the Packers. It's just, you know, outside of the Browns, that's kind of like my other, cause they're on the other side, you know, they're NFC. I don't really, you know, don't see them a lot. So, yeah. um, that'd be really cool. Um, but again, I'm just interested to see like watching the games. Like I remember growing up and I bet you were too, you know, you get too close to the Super Bowl and you get all amped up about playoff football, the snow, the hitting hard. Right. Um, again, I think we'll give uh, more as more games go. We'll kind of see what happens, but it's going to be a great playoff uh, playoff time. And so uh, again, I just want to say to everyone out there, thank you so much for tuning in last week. Please leave a like comment make sure you correct all of our nfl draft mistakes 
because I'm sure that everyone disagrees with us, Josh. I mean, everyone agrees with us. You mean not everyone's going to agree with the picks that we made for their teams? I mean, totally. I mean, the Jets fans are just going to be all over us very quickly. <laughs> um, but yeah, please leave a like and uh, subscribe if you can. Again, it, it makes this a lot easier to see more of my videos, but then also to watch Josh and I debate on topics like... Uh, who knows what? Um, but before we go, and before we finish up, Josh, of course, I'm going to come with the question of the day because you don't think I would forget, would you? Uh, um, nice. So, all right, this is the question for you, right? If they could create a make a movie about you and your life, who would you be the actor that would play you? Uh, who would be the actor for me? Hmm. I think right now. Uh, and I mean, I would love for it to be The Rock, but I don't know if I am big enough yet. So we're going to go uh, still kind of like the athletic route, uh, younger guy, maybe somebody along the lines of like a Zac Efron or a Andrew Garfield. Like it's like a John Cena, you know, like a John Cena, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but an actor now? can we call him an actor? I, I know he, he, he wrestles. He wrestles. Let's be honest. He wrestles. <laughs> um so okay i agree um i so i'm gonna give my thought I, obviously i think about these questions which is really weird because normally i come up with this question like when i ask you to be on the show i was like okay what's the question i'm like sitting in my study hall like thinking like i'm doing study hall monitoring like what what could be a question and i think who could play me in a movie right so i came up with a couple of options um i thought of uh um mark Wahlberg. I don't know why, just thought of Mark Wahlberg. Um, but I think because of my deep voice, I'm going to have to go. I said this last week because he was in my question last week. Matthew McConaughey. I just think Matthew McConaughey just makes sense. Kid from a country town, kind of makes sense. Deep voice, loves the country side. I don't know. I don't really have anybody that looks like me because I'm skinny and not really that athletic anymore. So, you know, maybe like a Pete Davidson. Uh, don't play yourself that short, man. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm yeah, kidding so much. That. No, uh, I would say I would say you know a Mark Wahlberg or a maybe Will Ferrell. Maybe I'll go Will Ferrell. Oh, my sarcastic humor that makes no sense. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I kind of like the the McConaughey route. Yeah, I think, if, I think if he he grew his beard out, it would yeah. be a little bit similar to yours and. Like you mentioned, both the country, uh, both football fans. Yes. So. Yeah, maybe Matthew McConaughey. That's the, Matthew McConaughey, if you would like to create a movie about me, I'm all down. Totally down for it. Just let me know. Um, so anyways, thank you so much, Josh, for t uh, coming on again. Uh, if you love having Josh on, comment. Let us know because I love having him on. It's awesome. We're six or 4,000 miles away from each other, and yet we still could talk about football. It's the beauty of technology, awesome. people. Uh, awesome. So anyways, thank you so much uh, for coming on. And if you've liked this video, if you love the video, however, if you, even you hated it, still like it, subscribe, and also like it on all the podcasting forums that you can find it on. Uh, and tune in next week where hopefully Josh will be on again and we'll discuss more football, maybe basketball. Who knows what we're going to discuss. Uh, but all that will be more on the baseline next week. So until then, we'll see you guys.